it's possible for you to kind of more automate the payroll process once it's going to be set up so that hopefully the the pain of the payroll will happen you know when it's required to happen soon after you process the payroll so you can kind of automate the system but we can't get too much more detailed in our practice problem than that so i'm going to just enter a normal check into the system to record us paying the government for the payroll so once again you would want to do this in practice through the payroll system because when you process the 940s and the 941s what will happen is it'll recalculate your liability and then it'll show how much you paid them and hopefully you paid the exact amount of the liability and the amount that you will owe at the point that you process the 941s quarterly will be zero. It's kind of like the form 1040, where in a perfect world, you would already have paid your taxes exactly when you file the form 1040 by April 15th, and that should match your liability and you wouldn't get a refund or owe any taxes at that point. It's impossible to do that because of the complexity of the tax code for the individual income taxes, but that's the idea. It is possible to do that in payroll because they haven't completely made it totally out of whack that, that you can't do that anymore by having too much complication in the tax code as of yet. So they'll probably get there at some point. But in any case, so if you don't, if you don't pay through the system, it's not going to generate these reports that will populate automatically the amount that you, that you have already paid. And that's you're going to have a problem with your nine with reporting your 940s and your 941s in that way and so on. So, but this is what we got to do with the practice problem. So I'm going to make a check. We're just going to write a check form plus button. I'm going to make it a check form. We're going to decrease the checking account. Other side going to the liability. So I'm going to say this is going to go to let's say. Now I'm going to make actually three separate payments and three separate vendors, even though the federal income tax, the social security and Medicare are all going to, you know, the federal government to, to allow it to tie into the bank reconciliations that we have already made. So I'm going to say IRS FIT federal income tax. So that's going to be the vendor I'm going to set up. And I'm just going to say that's going to be our vendor, save it. And then I'm going to say this is the check that went out. I'm going to say at the end of February 02-28-23 for the amount that is due at the end of January or the payroll that we processed in January. Now I have to adjust the check number because we manually adjusted the check numbers in a prior presentation. So 1024, I'm going to put that check number in, which will be useful when we do the bank reconciliations. If, if their bank reconciliation doesn't tie in and you don't have a check number, not a big deal. We'll still be able to work it, but I'm going to try to tie that into our bank recs. And then we're going to say the payroll liabilities. We want the payroll liabilities, federal taxes, blah, 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 941, 943, and so on. And so I'm going to take the amount of 1080. Now I'm going to make two other checks which are in essence going to do the same thing checks decreasing the checking account the other side decreasing the liability account just making three checks to tie into the format that we have on our uh, bank bank statement that we'll use to do our bank reconciliation so i'm going to say save and new let's do it again ultra base i'm going to make another vendor up top it's going to be irs and i'm going to say this time medicare irs medicare medicares who's meta meta doesn't care it's a medicare like a meta thing this is going to be 228 there we have it so i think the check number is now back on in alignment 228 that's what we want this is also going to go to the federal in federal taxes but the 941 blah 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 and this one is going to be for the amount of 82.52 and then we'll do it one more time uno base mas hitting the drop down i don't need the drop down save and new so this one is going to be i'm going to say one more time irs social security company we'll just say okay boom and I'm making up the vendors. They're all going to the to the government. 
they're all federal uh, taxes. But in theory, they're going to, you know, into different funds, you know, <laughs> to be spent on different things. Although I'm highly skeptical that they just don't find a way to spend whatever they want on whatever they want to spend it on. But that's a different issue. It doesn't matter. We're, this is the bookkeeping. Let's not get into how the government wastes our money. It's now a whole nother story. So here we go. So we've got that one. So now that looks good. So now let's say save it and close it. So I'm going to hit the drop down and save and close and check out what happened. We're going to go to the tab to the right, scrolling up. Let's run it to refresh it. So we got fresh stuff and go into the checking account. So within the checking, I can scroll down and then we've got our checks that we have made here noting that they're not like special payroll checks or payroll tax checks or anything like that which is an indication that we processed them not using the payroll widget right so so if there was an issue where i processed the 941s and the deposits that i made are not showing up properly this would be an indication as to why right because i didn't use the payroll widget i couldn't in the practice problem but in practice if things aren't matching up you can go in here and say okay yeah i see what's happening because you're doing payroll stuff without using the payroll widget thing which means your sub ledger reports are off which means that they're not properly populating the 941s the 940s and the w2s and w3s and whatnot back to the report the other side is decreasing the liabilities here. So if I go into the payroll liabilities, boom, and then go into this thingy dingy, then now we've got our three checks. And once again, we can see them as checks. So, so that would be an indication in here in an account that should have nothing but payroll type related transaction type forms. When you have non-payroll related transaction type forms, if you're processing payroll within QuickBooks instead of by a third party provider, that would be an indication of, okay, what's going on here? You know, something got out of whack and they're trying to fix things and, and things got more out of whack because they're fixing things outside of the widget. But we have to do it in a practice problem because we're not working in real time and that's the issue. So now we paid off uh the payroll for the first month so let's pull out the trusty calculator here just to kind of get an idea of this so we processed payroll we processed payroll for through january and we ended up with a liability of 2028.46 right and then we paid uh the payroll here with these three checks these three checks which are coming to uh, out to 1080 plus the 82.52 plus the 865.94 and that's what comes out to this 202846 uh, which matches that so we paid off the payroll for January in February we still have a liability which is from the transact the payroll that we processed at the end of february which we're going to be paying in march that's that's the general idea after we do this no matter how many no, how many no matter how we're structured whether we pay weekly whether we pay bi-weekly whether we pay monthly or semi-monthly after the first quarter which is three months january february march usually then by the end of the next month of the second quarter of April, you got to file a form 941, right? That would be the quarterly forms, which are going to summarize how much how much you owed and whether or not you paid that amount. And hopefully it should be an information type of report. So you're gonna have to basically summarize this whole thing again on a quarterly basis. That's the general idea. And then show the IRS or the government how much your liability is, how much you actually paid. Hopefully those things tie out. So you don't owe anything at the point that you file the form uh, 941 on a quarterly basis. And then you would also generally have to do that on a yearly basis for the uh, form 940 uh, as well. 